Greetings, it's Harriet here. I hope you're all having a wonderful week. Welcome back to my art studio here in Leitrim's Iron Mountains. Today I am sharing another short time lapse in my sketchbook. I'm joining in with Kitchy Floss's February Instagram drawing challenge, which is called Hearts and Flowers, perfect for the month of love and the beginning of spring. You can find her wonderful and inspiring prompt list at hashtag Hearts and Flowers 2020. Today's drawing is day 10, and the prompt is cold, which fits perfectly as it's just started to snow here on the mountain. For this piece, working in my new 300 GSM watercolour sketchbook by Pink Pig, I decided to figure out the sketch with a pale blue Faber-Castell aquarelle watercolour pencil. Then I'm defining the lines with various shades of Faber-Castell classic colouring pencil. This way, when I begin to add the watercolour to the piece, I can wash away the more sketchy lines I made with the watercolour pencil. I find this is a nice way to start a watercolour character painting. I will again link all of my tools and materials below the video. I chose to draw a character, Icy, holding a frozen heart. This piece is partially inspired by the Snow Queen, an original fairy tale by the Danish author Hans Christian Andersen, first published in 1844. The story centers on the struggle between good and evil, as experienced by Gerda and her friend Kai. The pretext of the story told that the devil, in form of an evil troll, has made a magic mirror that distorts the appearance of everything it reflects. Under the devil troll's instruction, a gang of trolls attempt to carry the mirror into heaven to make fools of the angel and God. But the higher they lift it, the more the mirror shakes with laughter and slips from their grasp and falls back to earth, shattering into billions of pieces. The shards are blown away by the wind all over the earth and they get into people's hearts and eyes, freezing their hearts like blocks of ice and making their eyes like the troll mirror itself, unable to see the beauty in things. A shard of the troll mirror gets into Kai's heart and eyes. Kai becomes cruel and aggressive. He no longer cares about Gerda, since everyone now appears to be bad and ugly to him. The only beautiful and perfect thing to him now are the tiny snowflakes that he sees through a magnifying glass. The following winter, Kai goes out with his sled to play in the snow, and he hitches it to a curious white sleigh carriage driven by the Snow Queen, who appears as a woman in white fur coat. Outside, she kisses him twice, wants to numb him from the cold, and the second time to make him forget about his friend Gerda and his family. She takes Kai into her sleigh and to her palace. The people of the city conclude that Kai has died in a nearby river. Gerda, heartbroken, goes out the next summer to look for him. When she eventually finds him, Gerda runs up to Kai and kisses him. Saved by the power of her love, Gerda weeps warm tears onto him, melting his heart and burning away the troll mirror splinter in it. This is just a small summary of the story. It's actually quite an epic saga and worth reading if you're unfamiliar with it. There's definitely a melancholy in my character, holding up her frozen heart. I drew icicles hanging from her clothes. I wanted her to be motif-like, contained without a background. She takes on a deity type of air, as I drew a small snow-capped row of trees within the folds of her dress. She stays cold-hearted, icy and brittle, until the seasons change into springtime, with its rejuvenating warm sun stirring her heart like all of nature awakening, full of life, love, and the new birth of the season. The watercolors that I am using are by Ezigu, which is the first time I've sat down to do a whole painting with these, and I'm finding them very nice with a good dense pigmentation. I'm mixing in Winston and Newton gouache, which has a lovely powdery matte finish and blends so well with the watercolors. I find that gouache is more opaque than watercolor. When layering down the watercolor, the white from the paper and any preliminary drawings underneath will show through. Whereas when a layer of gouache is applied, the underneath layer will not show up nearly as much. I find with the transparency of the watercolour, the light is able to travel through the pigment and reflect off the white paper in a different way, giving it a luminous quality that is very different from gouache's matte finish. 
The contrast between the two types of paint used together give the piece an interesting surface quality, especially when using fine white gouache brush marks against the watercolour base. This was a quick little painting that took me about two hours to complete, and I really like how she came out. I'm looking forward to working on the next prompts over the coming days. We are coming to the end of my time lapse now, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Do have an inspiring week, and I hope to see you all again soon for another video. Bye bye.